Hello everyone. My name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. And today I have with me Guru, the Agile Guru. I know that I don't have to introduce Guru to all of you because he is quite popular on the social media platforms and the knowledge that he shares. But one thing that I can tell you is this session is going to be very informative. We'll keep it informal. We will keep it to the point and we will discuss a lot about work culture, agile, DevOps and cloud and much more. So before going into the session, I would like to give it to you, Guru, if you want to explain about your experience in a couple of lines. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so for people who don't know me, my full name is Guru Murthy Raghuvati, but no one calls me that. So people call me Guru and please call me that. Um, my total ID experience is only 24 years. I did my master's from Pune University, but I've been based out of London for the last 22 years. Uh, I come from application development and infrastructure engineering background, mostly with investment banks for 13 years, and then I worked for UK government. And currently, I'm working for a company called Do It, whose ticker is there. And uh, my title here is a cloud architect, uh, mainly focusing on GCP, but I'm good at AWS as well. Awesome. Yeah, I think this couple of lines introduction from Guru uh, itself explains how informative this session is going to be. And we will try to extract as much as possible from his 24 years, just 24 years of experience. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Guru. So, uh, Guru, uh, you know, basically uh, from the Agile point of view, because you are Agile Guru as well. So, uh, one thing is that as a DevOps and cloud team, right, you interact mm -hmm. with a lot of teams, right? Yeah. Uh, you talk to multiple development teams. And yeah. again, one big unknown for people who are joining DevOps and cloud is, uh, let's say as a DevOps team, you are talking to various development teams and each mm. of them have some tasks for you, right? Mm. Let's say development team number one asks you to create a Terraform related stuff. Development number team uh, 10 might ask you to write a mm. Jenkins pipeline for them. Now, mm. as one single team, when you're working with a lot of these teams, right? How do you organize your work? How do you understand which is your priority? Right. Okay. How does this entire yeah. thing works from the agile point of view? Probably if you can. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, every company, as I mentioned, works differently. Yes. Normally, there is nothing called a DevOps team per se. That's a very bad thing to say. I'm sure you'll agree. But let's let me take two scenarios. Okay? Yeah. One where you have a DevOps team on its own. Yes. One, a DevOps person is within a product team. I will talk about the second part first, so that that's the ideal situation yep. where uh, a team is architect, developers, testers, mm. DevOps person yes. in one product team. Product team. Yes. And you have to be very informal within the team. Mm. You don't need to raise a ticket. You need to be proactive within the team. Okay. But once you're trying to fix something, you raise a ticket for yourself so that people will know what is going on. Got it. Because once Got you it. raise a ticket for yourself and assign to yourself, you're doing it productively, but people also know that you're working on it. So Got they it. don't have to come Got and ask. Visualize everything. Makes sense. Then people will not bugger you or mail you. Don't get distracted. Once you put everything is visual, people will know what is happening. Yes. So once you do that, you do your things. And uh, the other way is that there is a DevOps central team who central gets project Yeah. Even then, put your board up in the top, in the front mm. of the team. Got Let it. people watch you. Don't take your egos. You're just doing work. You, are, you have the same brain as, Guru has the same brain as Abhishek. I have the same two hands. I can only do some stuff based on my skill. So visualize your stuff, board it, and agree to prioritization with the product owners. Got it. It's the best way to do it. So, because, uh, hmm. Guru, sorry for uh, stopping you here. Probably hmm. some of our subscribers won't understand product owner or these kind of terms, right? Okay. So uh, we can probably uh, tell them, like, what does a product owner uh, okay. do in this point of view? Yeah. Okay, sure. So in an agile way of working, there are, Three things. One is a product owner sure. who decides when to deliver and what to deliver. Got it. 
not how to deliver. How to deliver is the Scrum team or the right. team development team or the product team as well. Yeah, this can be an infrastructure task or a development task or a testing task or whatever. Got the it. Product owner is a person who is responsible for the outcome. Sure. And they define the time. That's it. They don't tell you how to do things. They are not there. They tell you what and when. How is your problem? Got it. Right? That's the product owner. Coming back to my previous thing, as they say, as a product owner, once you do that, they tell you, I want this one. You say, okay, you're asking me to do five things. I also have five other things. Sure. Please, can we coordinate? And you tell me which one is the priority. Got Don't it. fight. Be sure. transparent. Say I have these many things, and say that our cap capacity, as they call it, is points in terms of delivery in a yes. time. Or, yeah, points. I can deliver forty per week. This is my standard. Makes sense. Yeah, I can deliver up to forty. Stretch. There can be something called stretch goals. If it, this is sure. finished more, I can do more. But this is what we call the Moscow method. Must have, should have, and could have. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's called Moscow method. No, it's a very well-known thing. Yeah. So must have, should have, could have. You decide that, and then you say within this sprint, I'll deliver. Got it. So but, basically, yeah. sorry for breaking. So basically, <laughs> uh, from a DevOps engineer point of view, when you have a lot of things that are coming at you, then there is some help that you get whether it can yeah. be from the product owner, scrum master. So you have to be uh, willing to ask them, right? Exactly. Exactly. Unless you ask, people think that you are comfortable and you'll do it. Got it. They don't know your cap capacity and capability. Right? Sense. For example, sense. if you ask me to write Terraform or Jenkins, I will take one tenth of the time because I have my 20 years of code written and put in GitHub. Literally okay. copy and paste and change the parameters. <laughs> but I know my code. That's why. Yes. If the same code I give it to you, it yeah. will become very hard for you to do that because you don't understand the context. So it depends on, on the context, right? Perfect. So you need to get help. Remember, it's a team. There is no I in a team. Perfect. Ask. And always when you say, I will do it in two days, think about the 80-20 rule. 80% of the things can get done in 20% of the time and 20% of the work gets take 80% of the time. 80%, yeah. And also think about spare capacity. Hmm. As failures will happen, something, some other infrastructure is down or network is down or due to floods, something has happened. You never Perfect. know. So always bear that in mind and hmm. say, in an ideal situation, I'll give you 40 in the best case scenario, I'll give you 60. In the worst case, I'll give you 20. Perfect. Perfect. Once you do the thing, you agree with this, with product owners and the stakeholders and the product team. And say, hey, by the way, looks like guys, we have three more days for the sprint to finish and I finish all the tasks. Which one do you want me to pick? So, Guru, basically, yeah. so, Guru basically, uh, see, because... I have 10 years of experience. You have 24 years of experience. And mm -hmm. a lot of these things we have learned through our practice, right? Yeah. Uh, how to do the work allocation? How does this happen? And when to say yes, when to say no. Now, mm -hmm. uh, one concern again people uh, have is, uh, Abhishek, I can learn DevOps from your channel. Probably if I want uh, about infrastructure architect, I can go to uh, Guru and learn things from there. Now, one major thing is, uh, can you suggest or recommend our uh, channel, our subscribers, uh, any good way to learn about this agile processes? Uh, you know, uh, how does team uh, work culture look like in real organization? Have you come across something that you can help yeah. our subscribers? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So one book I would suggest is uh, number one. Uh, actually, I I do it on my own. Awesome. So this book uh, is called The Culture Map by Erin Meyer. Awesome. Uh, one of the things we don't understand is communication. Yeah. We all have the best intentions. But yes. the problem is we don't communicate well. Hmm. And especially, for example, uh, a German way of working and an American way of working and an Indian way of working are totally incompatible. 
when it comes to um, actual implementation in a commercial organization, if hmm. you want to learn agile way of working, yeah. in GitHub, there is a video, there is a tool called GitHub Projects, yes. which is a free tool. Yes. It, play with it. My suggestion is uh, ping me or Abhishek or anyone and say, Guru, I want a 10 minutes help in setting up hmm. this project. Hmm. I'll tell you, after 10 minutes, you don't even need me. You'll say, Guru, I'll do it myself. <laughs> and yeah, then once one. you get the discipline, <laughs> discipline, and most of the time, it's about three things. What, why, and when. Hmm. It's all about these three things only. And once you get into that discipline, this there are Jira, lots of things. But of course, Jira is a commercial product. For your own personal, I would say GitHub projects GitHub are by far. For your learning, but every commercial organization does it differently. Asana yeah. is there. Other thing, but if you want to do on Azure your own, boards, uh, yeah. Azure boards also. Azure is very good actually. Yeah. Uh, but uh, because lots of people are used with GitHub, <laughs> GitHub, the project, yeah. the project is a good. Uh, even I would recommend that uh, because Guru was talking about it, right? You don't even have to go to GitHub and create your own project. Like Kubernetes does their uh, entire projecting on GitHub. Uh, uh, you can check uh, Golang. Golang does their entire uh, projecting on uh, GitHub. So just go there and see uh, how they are moving the tasks. What are the tasks? What are in the to-do? What does in progress mean? What does done mean? How different people are collaborating on it? How they are reviewing the changes? Yeah. I think it's a wonderful suggestion. Probably I would have not thought about it if not this call. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, Guru, uh, from your uh, experience, right, uh, in infrastructure as code, uh, for example, mm -hmm. right? So you have seen uh, this going from point A to point B, which is like from nowhere to right now, everybody is talking about infrastructure as code, right? Yeah. Everybody is talking about uh, Terraform, people are talking about new tools like Crossplane, etc, etc, right? So mm -hmm. one question that I would like to ask you is uh, when I want to learn a new tool, right? It can be Terraform or it can be Crossplane, it can be anything, right? Uh, what is your approach? How do you actually learn that new technology? Number one, be practical. Okay. okay. Now, please don't Again, the same, I think I may be repeating like a broken record. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Your ego yeah. should not be bigger than your brain. Hmm. Hmm. Do for something which is new fancy. 60% of all Google code is thrown out every year. Not hmm. many people know. Hmm. So hmm. Uh, my suggestion is don't use a tool or learn a tool which has come to the market three months ago or five months ago. Don't use it. Hmm. Think about a product which has been there for at least a year and many organizations use it. Okay. Remember, you using a new tool for yourself, which is not going to be used later, is of no use to you, mm. no use to your company, and it's a waste of your time. So Perfect. don't do that. Perfect. Now, for example, before Terraform, and of course, depends on your constraint, the same vegetarian, non-vegetarian hotel scenario. <laughs> okay. Right? If you're on-prem, Terraform won't work. Hmm. Yeah, then you have to configure a service so Ansible is not infrastructure as code, but it's configuration as code. Ansible, Puppet, and all. But keep things simple. So think about value driven development. Create a Terraform module which will develop, which will give you a basic Kubernetes cluster with Nginx controller with SSL provided. Hmm. At least the, the, so that the application development team can deploy somewhere. Hmm. Then you can talk about node pooling, auto scaling, and all those things. Because in development, they don't need this. Start with small things. Small things, exactly. Okay. As they say, don't build only the wheel for the cycle for the BMW car. No, <laughs> build a cycle first. Let them yeah. drive the cycle. Then build a Scooty. And then build a uh, Skoda. Then build a Rolls Royce. Right. Yeah, just like, just like they say that Rome is not built in a day. Similarly, exactly. infrastructure yeah. is also not built in a day. And learning infrastructure is also, you know, go step by step, do some yeah. practicals, right? Uh, talk yeah. about uh, building simple uh, modules like Guru was suggesting. So Guru, I have uh, two more questions uh, to you. Mm -hmm. uh, one question is about, uh, because you 
learn a lot of things you share a lot of knowledge right uh, it's it's truly an inspiration uh, because even after 24 years you are very passionate about sharing and very passionate about learning so can you share a little bit about how does your day look like okay um, for people who don't know much about me uh, i am married to a very good lady called radhika awesome Radhika Yakuski, she didn't change her name after getting married. <laughs> She's a gold lady. Uh, she is a gold medalist from Salem University, and she oh, treats children with acquired brain injuries. We both get up at four thirty in the morning. Four thirty early in the morning. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And uh, as you see, I get coffee whenever I ask. <laughs> so, so she makes me a lovely coffee at four forty-five. And they clean all those things. Uh, then five o'clock to eight o'clock is study and help other people on a personal basis. Okay. So okay. I read, do some coding, to learn some, read some materials, or or see if I get any request to help. Remember, I'm based out of London, so there is a depending on the web on yeah. this type of year it's four and a half hours or five and a half hours difference so then what happens is some people in india which is afternoon they ping me guru can you guide me i take half hmm. an hour today morning i did two sessions for two new people oh. in them what yeah right so and then so that five to eight is my own study and learning and sharing time hmm. that's, that's there is no exceptions to that obviously This this is not applicable on Saturdays and Sundays. I'll come to that in a minute because I play badminton on those days. Yeah, so I I bugger off for that. So on normal day, and hmm. then eight to nine, I prepare for the day for my office. Okay. Now, my my office is quite. My company is quite. I wouldn't say stringent. They discourage working outside office hours. Okay. Very good. Your office hours is nine to five, work nine to five, and also there is a rule in our company that thirty percent of your official time has to go for learning. Sure. So technically, we work only for three and a half days in a week. <laughs> okay. Three and a half days for your learning, uh, because what they say is people are expensive, as I mentioned, right? So I prepare for the day, and from nine to five, no personal calls. Throw away your mobile. I don't take calls most of the time, unless two people, my yeah. wife, <laughs> my daughter. Yeah, yeah. So do and you do you work people. from? Sorry for interrupting. Do you work from mm-hmm. home or uh, like do you go to office? Uh, I have not gone to the office for the last three and a half years. Okay, <laughs> okay. So yeah. but but do it of course. I've joined them to almost two years ago. Hmm. Um, we are totally remote. We yeah. have an office. Yeah, but we don't go there. Okay. Worst case scenario, we can go, but we don't, mm, uh, because it. most of our clients are either based in Europe or Australia, Singapore, uh, Israel, yeah. and US as well. So, and of course, we have customers in UK as well, but we are not tied to one customer per se. <laughs> we can yeah. deliver for a lot of things. So, I work from home, so nine to five, and. And after five, it's my call to see whether I want to do two, three hours extra or not. Sure. Uh, my company says no, but sometimes next day you may have a very hectic schedule, sure. then you have to prepare for it. I try not to work after seven, but always have some spare capacity in the week, so that if you miss yeah. something, you still have the time. Trust me, it's all common sense. It's not complicated. You just okay. need to plan. As they, my dad used to say, if you do anything without planning, it's called a wish. One last question uh, that I have, Guru, is uh, again to help a lot of aspirants. I'm asking this question. So mm-hmm. let's say there is an aspirant. Uh, let's create a scenario, right? So mm-hmm. let's say there is an aspirant, and uh, the scenario is that uh, aspirant joins a well-established. Uh, devops and cloud team or a product team right and 
there are a lot of unknowns for this aspirant. Of course, the interview went well, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Interview went well in terms of Kubernetes or other things. And there is a lot of work uh, from the Terraform. There is a lot of unknowns for this aspirant. Okay, he joined mm-hmm. the company. Now, a mm-hmm. lot of times people are uh, nervous. People are like, you know, uh, they are uh, afraid that, okay, no, I got the job, but I don't think I can sustain in the job because there are a lot of unknowns for me, right? Mm-hmm. So how does the usual onboarding happen in that company? Like, let's say someone is joining your team and you have mm-hmm. a lot of infrastructure work. You interviewed mm-hmm. the candidate. You know that he's good with Kubernetes, but does not have a lot of experience on infra. Right. Mm. So now what you would suggest that person, would you provide him training after he joins or, you know, uh, should he reject the offer? Anything that Mm. you think of. There are two things to this. This is one is called the company culture and Mm. then you want to call the team culture. Mm. Mm. I'll come to the company culture. For example, if you look at do it, they don't expect you to do anything for the first month. (laughs) <laughs> okay. a single task. Okay. It's all about creating relationships. Okay. Whether it's technical people, senior people, sales people, marketing people. Okay. Uh, they, they let you set up your desk, expensify <laughs> all the things. Okay. And they tell you what your interest. How about sending your family's picture about your dogs and cats <laughs> onto Slack and everything. And they give you a playground. Uh, day one. That's how do it works. Okay. Now, and then there is a team culture uh, where within those first month, they will tell you, oh, this is the kind of do, and we have something called a buddy program. Buddy program. Okay. Buddy program. Where you don't do stuff. You huh. just sit with someone and they expect you not to do something and understand what to do. Okay. Got and it. Do. And they will say, hey, Guru, Guru this is how you're doing. You then try it out Hmm. on your own place. Okay. But, of course, our company is on the very extreme side where they give you the full autonomous, (laughs) they give you AWS and GCP access, you can do what the heck you want. They don't complain. Right? Uh, I mean, my manager's manager or, or very senior people, they say, Guru, don't be afraid to fail. But don't fail it on customers at government. Do it in your own. <laughs> yeah. Number two, number two, they don't say don't waste things. Waste is bad. Hmm. Yeah. Try something, works, kill the environment. Create one more kill. And just do something which you don't have to justify. Got it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you do something and they go it. In a month, if I'm spending like $400, no one cares. But if I don't do anything, not delivering something, and I spend $4,000 on the cloud, then my mind will go, Guru, why? Mm. Yes, I don't waste things. But my company, of course, do it is totally on the extreme side. But yeah. on a practical side, mm. don't be afraid. It's like going on a date. There will always mm. be a first time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So there will be stomach and you'll be going to the toilet and you'll be spraying lots of perfumes <laughs> and doing your hair. Make sure that if you're smoking, you put some bubble gums and everything. Don't over prepare. Don't overthink. Yeah. yeah. I'll, change, that I'll change this discussion to honest talks with Guru. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't yeah. don't overthink. They also know that you are new. Hmm. Don't reject a job. Try to get out of your comfort position. The same is with me. My 20, 19, 18 years of experience was on-prem. Mm-hmm. Now I work for a full cloud company. They said, Guru, why did they give me the job? They said, I heard that you created your own small data center in your garage and in your loft by buying a lot of servers. I said, how the heck do you know that? <laughs> oh, we know. We know. That's why we called you. First mm-hmm. Right? So, and they said, I heard that you, before you put it on cloud, you were hosting your application in your own infrastructure and you're doing a lot of automation means you're technically capable. Exactly. Yeah, that's what matters. Then, as I mentioned before, your ego should not be bigger than your brain. Don't be afraid to say, I don't know. 